Amen. Amen. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in to stay, come in, I pray, come in. To my heart, Lord Jesus, one more time, into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in. Come in, I pray, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Let us pray, Father in heaven, one more time, Lord, we are privileged to be in your court another night. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your grace and mercy towards us. As we are about to go to our song service, I pray, Lord, Whatever we do or say, I pray it will be done to the name and and glory. Tune up us, God, to sing your praise. And as we sing, Lord, heaven will come down and glory will fill our soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 We will now put our hands together. We will go into our some level courses. Get together, get together, get together in the Lord. Let us call. Get together in the Lord. Oh, let us greet each other like sister and brother. Let us all get together in the Lord. Get together, get together, get together with the Lord. Let us all get together with the Lord. Oh, let us greet each other, my sister and brother. Let us all get together with the Lord. It is all right, all right. It is all right, all right. As well as I have my Lord beside me, it is all right. As long as I have his hands to hold, long as he watches over my soul, long as I'm under his control, it is all right. Oh, it is all right, all right. It is all right, all right. As long as I have my Beside me, it is all right. Long as I have his hands to hold, long as he watches over my soul, long as I'm under his control, it is all right. You can tell the world about this, you can bring the nation about that. Tell them Jesus has come, tell them that the comforter has come. He brings joy to my soul, he brings joy to my soul. You can tell the world about this, you can tell the nation about that. Tell them Jesus has come, tell them that the comforter has come. He brings joy to my soul, he brings joy to my soul. When I get there, when I get there, I will sing a shout when I get there. Hallelujah, praise the Lord when I get there. When I 
Bring all the seven birds when I get them. My sorrow will be over. Heaven just come over. Bring all the seven birds when I get them. Oh, what a glory that will be. I'm so set free. Oh, what a hallelujah. When we reach a beautiful land, what a glory that will be. Oh, what a glory that will be. Oh, when the ransom so set free. Oh, what a hallelujah come when we reach in Beulah land. What a glory that will be. Oh, what a glory that will be. Oh, when the ransom so set free. Oh, what a hallelujah come when we reach in Beulah land. What a glory that will be. Oh, what a glory that will be. Oh, what the ransom so set free. Oh, what a hallelujah time. When we reach in Beulah land, what a glory that will be. Come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. There will be joy, joy, joy. Jesus will be there. In my father's house, in my father's house, in my father's house, Jesus will be there. In my father's house, there will be joy, joy, joy. Come and go with me in my father's house, oh, to my father's house. To my father's house, come and go with me to my father's house. There will be joy, joy, joy. Amen. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise him. Redemption coming, praise the Lord. What a wonderful freedom, glory to his name. I'm out of the bondage, I'm into that freedom. Redemption coming, praise the Lord. Redemption coming, praise the Lord. What a wonderful freedom, glory to his name. I'm out of the bondage, I'm into that freedom. Redemption coming, praise the Lord. Redemption coming, praise the Lord. What a wonderful freedom, glory to his name. I'm out of the bondage, I'm into God's freedom, redemption coming, praise the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Let's praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. We're now going to go in our team song and to prepare our night for the night, sir, our heart for the night service. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you faithful in all that you do? The theme of the Bible is Jesus and how he died to save men. The plan of salvation assures us he's coming back again. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you faithful in all that you do? Have you fought a good fight? Have you stood for the right? Can others see Jesus in you? Are you ready to stand in your place? Are you ready to look in his face? Can you look up and say, this is my Lord? Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you faithful in all that you do? Have you fought a good fight? Have you stood for the right? Can others see Jesus in you? Are you ready to stand on your place? Are you ready to look in his face. Can you look up and say, this is my Lord. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you ready? For oh, Jesus to come. Amen. We are together again, just praising the Lord. We are together again on one accord something good is going to happen something good is in store we are together again just praising the lord good evening everyone good evening if god has been good to you let me hear you say amen amen, amen. 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 if god has provided for you today let me hear you say thank you jesus thank, thank you jesus. Jesus. jesus thank you jesus amen Unfortunately, I did not hear all of you, but I can only imagine how you are shouting in your different homes because truly God has been good to us and he deserves all our praise. As usual, a special welcome is extended to each and every one of you. Wherever you're worshiping from, I welcome you to the very heart of God. I pray that as we worship the Lord, let us lift him up. And when we lift up Jesus, he, the blessings, will come down and fill our souls. Psalm, David in Psalm 34 and verse 8 says, Oh, come, let us taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. 
this evening, I encourage all of us to just taste of the goodness of God. Yeah. If you have not yet done so, it's not too late because truly mm -hmm. God is good to all of us. This evening, I just want to say welcome to you all. And may as we worship the Lord. Sorry about that. And this evening, as we continue to worship the Lord, we will receive the blessing that he has in store for us. So welcome one, welcome all. Sister Treasure, you can go ahead now. Thank you. It's Sister Osborne. You're not going to do our fellowship you. song. It's a good time to get acquainted. For the person beside you, you're going you're gonna to wave and say hello. It's a good time to get acquainted. It's a good time to know. The one who's sitting close beside you, just smile and say hello. Say goodbye to lost some feeling. You're happy you were here. Here's my hand, I'm very glad to meet you. Just put your smart in. It's a good time to get acquainted. It's a good time to know. The phone is close to me, close beside you. Just smile and say hello. Say goodbye to let some feeling. We're happy you were here. Here's my hand. I'm very glad to meet you. Just put yours right here. Just put yours right here. Amen. 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 I hope that we will keep those smiles on our faces and let the beauty of Jesus Christ be seen in us. I now invite Sister Osborne to do the prayer for us. Good night, everyone. Good night, Sister Osborne. To God be the glory, great things he has done. One more time, he has brought us together again. Let us bow our heads as we pray. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Eternal Father and our God, the great I am, the great sustainer and provider. This hour again, Lord, we thank you for the breath of life so that we can come bowing before you one more time. We thank you, God, that you have been with us from morning until this hour. And so, Lord, as we gather on this platform, we ask your divine presence to be with each and every one of us. That, Lord, whatever will be said and done tonight, great God, your name alone will be glorified and your people will be closer drawn to thee. We ask, Holy God, that you will forgive us of our many sins. Cleanse us, O God, and wash us and make us into whom you want us to be to bring glory and honor to your name. Lord, one more time we place your man servant before you. Father, we ask that you will take over this program. We ask, holy God, that this program will be never like before. Father, it will be extraordinary, holy God, so that souls will be born for your eternal kingdom. Father, we are nothing without you. Help us to acknowledge you as God and to turn to you before it is eternally too late. We pray for those who, dear Lord, who are wandering in sin, not knowing their left or their right, mighty God. But we pray, Holy God, that you'll send your Holy Spirit to word their consciences so that they can come to the truth and acknowledge you as God and Savior of their lives. We pray, Lord, for each and every one on this platform, those who have not yet accepted you, Lord, that they will hear your words tonight and the Father's hearts will be touched Life will be transformed and you alone will be glorified as your man's servant hope in his mouth tonight, great God. I pray for a double portion of your spirit to fall afresh upon him. Anoint him now, Father, and use him to your name, to your honor, and to your glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We tell you thanks for hearing and answering prayer in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. I'm sure you will all agree with me that without some beautiful singing, our worship service is not fully completed. This evening, we have in our midst worshiping with us, Sister Christine Stoltz. She will now bless our hearts with a special song. After that, we will go right into our special feature, and this will be done by Sister Tensil Silver. Listen and be blessed. Sister Christine Stoltz will now bless our hearts. The world was dismayed before I came along, and it may not get better by the time I am gone. But if I had to talk, what I'm passing through. A song from my heart, Lord, to sing about you. For I love, I love you, Jesus, and I love, I love your name. It's been a long time ago, and I'm glad you came. Don't let go on doing what they want to do, for it makes me happy to sing about you. I've tasted some teardrops, a little heartache and pain. I've reached for those rainbows, but only in vain. I was I was so wretched. Hallelujah. Slowly and so blue. Until I found, I found a song, Lord, to sing about you. For I love, I love you, Jesus. Oh, and I love. I love your name. It's been a long time ago. And I'm glad you came. So let others go on doing what they want to do. For it makes me happy just to sing about you. For I love, I love you, Jesus. Oh, and I love, I love your name. It's been a long time ago, and I'm glad you came. So Doing what they want to do, for it makes me happy to sing about you. Lord, it makes me happy just to sing about you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Sister Silvo, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night, nurse. Good night. So tonight, our special for our special speak feature, we'll be looking at taking care of your emotional health during an infectious disease outbreak. Amen. All right. So due to the impact of the COVID-19 virus we are not able to carry out our daily activities the way we normally do. And we were created to be friendly, sociable, loving human beings. And because of this, it can have a negative impact on us as individuals. When you think about the old social distancing, the isolation, the quarantining, just the thought of us being in a, in, a, in a pandemic overall. So emotional health is the way we think, feel, and the ability to cope with difficult things in life. When we are in a more positive place, we tend to be more relaxed, happy, easygoing, chatty, and friendly. But when we are in a place of neg negative well-being, we tend to be upset, sad, hungry, quick, and quick-tempered. So things to expect when, when we're going through this pandemic that may affect us, it may affect us or some persons as well as it may not affect others due to how we personalize and how we see things. So we may end up going through anxiety, we may worry and we may fear. And those can be related to the fact that of our own personal health status. So the fact that we're in the pandemic, and if you know for yourself you're diabetic or you're hypertensive, it may put a little more pressure on you because you're saying that, sorry, you're more at risk. Also, the, the idea of you putting others at risk can also make you worry and fear. So, so when it comes to our loved ones, like our grandparents, we're not able to hug and kiss them as though we want to. Because the stress of you thinking of you having the virus and you don't know, and you might pass it to them. The time that we, most persons get time off from work and school. So some persons lose their job and the whole thought of not having a job is stressing as well not being able to take care of your loved ones. So if persons lose their job, they're not going to be able to be financial, financially stable to take care of their loved ones as well as they would want to. So all of those things which I mentioned above can result in us feeling lonely, feeling hungry and also frustrated. And if it's not dealt with properly, we can result in, being, in having depression. Right? Signs of depression, sadness, loss of appetite, sleep issues, hopelessness, and even suicidal thoughts. So we're going to look at some important tips to remember as we go through this pandemic. The first one is to secure your comfort within the comfort of your own. So things that are going to make you feel more comfortable, the fact that you are spending more time at home. For some person, it's having internet at all times so they can serve, they can go online, listen to church, they can watch movies, they can watch educational stuff. The old thought of even having a laptop or having a good enough smartphone to be able to stream online and even spending the time to listen to some comforting music or even your favorite music. Also, you need to, to see credible information about the disease for example, you can go on the WHO site or you go on the Ministry of Health and Wellness site instead of going on sites that are, are posting things that are negative and most of the time they are not true. We need to relax our bodies as often as we can by doing things that work for us. So for some persons, they can take deep breath exercise when they feel like they're getting too pressured or they feel an anxiety attack coming. Other persons, they can find the time to pray 
we would know about that because many times when we're done, prayer is what lifts us up. Also, you spend your time to go for a walk or stretch. We need to practice positive thinking as well. We can also make the time to make a to create a grateful journal. So we can get a little book, whatever size you're able to put your hand on, and you can make a list of things that you're thankful for for the day. And on certain days, you can always go back and you can look and you see how much you have a lot to be thankful for. And just the thought of that can help you to feel better. Also, we need to keep connected with others. So we can use technology. We probably usually spend time with our friends and family on the outside. We're not able to do it as much as we want to do it now or in the same fashion. So we can use the internet, spend time to even call, whether audio or you make a video call and you cheer up each other, spend time. Take the opportunity to know what's happening in each other's life. Also, we need to do regular exercise. So if you're the type of person you just spend time to go to the gym, know your home, you're scared of going to the gym, you spend your time to, to do your regular exercise at home. If you're not able to do it on your own in terms of understanding what to do or what, you can go on YouTube. There are lots of exercises there. You can follow them step by step. Also, you need to have a balanced diet. But most of all, you need to intake a lot of water and eat your fruits and vegetables as much as you can. We, eat, right now, fruits are kind of scarce. And even if you, you come by the fruits, they are very expensive. Same thing for vegetables. If you're able to plant something at home, even some melon, or you plant some sweet peppers and so forth, you spend the time to invest in it so that you can take a ease off your pocket. Also, you need to take a break from your routine work life. If you feel like you're getting pressured, because some of us still have to go to work, and you feel as if you're getting strained, so you can take a time, take a week off from work if you're able to do so, or you take a break from work. So those are the things that we need to remember. So we have a list of some of the don'ts, which some of the don'ts are don'ts, don't partake in substance abuse. So for some person, when they're done, that's the time that they feel like they want to drink alcohol or they want to smoke. Stay away from things like those. Avoid eating too much fast food because the fast food will have a negative impact on your health. Also, you need to prevent yourself from doing excessive online activity because temperance is key in everything that we do. We need to stay away from partying. We need to focus Stop focusing on negative aspects of the COVID-19. We need to stop spreading fake news and we even need to stop spending time to watch fake things or to believe fake news at the same time. I thank you. I hope it was informative for you. Thank you very much, Sister Silva. And I do hope that you all learned something from it because it was really, really informative. Yes, very. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank all those who participated in the service thus far. Sister Treasure, as usual, for leading out in the song service. We had um, Sister Osborne, who did the opening prayer. Sister Stoltz, who did the special song. And, of course, Sister Silva, who gave us some sounding tips to carry us through this time. I am now going to turn over to Sister Sachel Plummer as she will do her part. Okay, so tonight's speaker is our very own Pastor Anthony Dodin. He's a pastor of the Lonerton District of Churches, a husband, father and a friend of God's children, one who desires to see the people of God on a spiritual high and actively lead out in sin. Please continue to say a prayer for him as he leads the flock. For the song of meditation, Sister Christine Stoltz will bless our hearts and the next voice you hear will be the voice of Pastor Anthony Dowding. Be blessed.
have seen the light and flashing. I heard the thunder roll. I felt since breakers dashing, they're trying to conquer my soul. I heard the voice of my Savior telling me still to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, I'm never. Never alone, no, I'm never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. The world's fair winds are blowing to pay and sharp and keen. I felt a peace in knowing my Savior stands between. He stands to shield me from dangers and earthly friends are gone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, I'm never, never alone. No, I'm never alone. He promised never to leave me. To leave me alone. No, I'm never, never alone. No, you're never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. He promised. Miss never, never alone, no, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me In the church, say praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can the church say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can the church him. say praise thank him. you, Jesus. That thank you, worthy. Jesus. Thank you. God is truly worthy. He will never leave us alone. You see, he knows that Satan has come down with great wrath, seeking he may devour. Seeking whom he may devour. And because of that, he will never, never leave us alone. So we pray and we ask him to continue to guide and direct us, guide and support us, and, to, and, and, and lead us in the path of righteousness. For his name. Say. I want to thank Sister Stolz very much for. I want to thank Sister Stolz, Christine, very much for those two beautiful songs. We want to. I want to thank Sister Sachel for her words of introduction. And I want to thank everybody for participating tonight, whether you're from. England, whether you're from Canada, whether you're from Jamaica, whether you're from the United States, 
We want to welcome you tonight, whether you're from Lionel Town, Portland Cottage, Mitchell Town, or Raymond's. We want to welcome you tonight, and we would say that God loves you, and we loves you. We love you too, and we want to let you know that God is here to change lives. He's here to cause lives to be changed and to to rescue us from ourselves, and to lead us in the path of righteousness. Welcome one and all, and I pray that tonight's message will be one that will captivate your heart and will give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. Tonight, we want to look at the topic, the, vina, the villain of the drama of Revelation. The villain of the drama of Revelation. Amen. And tomorrow night, we want to look at the incredible good news of Revelation. The incredibly good news of Revelation. That's for tomorrow night. Now, I invite you to turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. And I invite you to read with me in your Bibles. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that he may be tried, and he shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you tonight for being with us tonight. We thank you for your saving grace. We thank you for allowing us to do our daily chores and to give us the strength to come into your marvelous presence for you to speak to us and for you to bless us. We are waiting upon you patiently, O oh Father. So disappoint us not. Forgive us of all our sins and accept our prayers. Accept our worship. Accept our praise. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that your tremendous blessing will fall upon everyone here on this platform and on the, 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 the the, the YouTube platform, oh God, I pray uh, that you will touch me, this feeble lump of clay. Unctionize me, Lord. Give me words to speak. Utter your words through me. And I pray, God, that I will speak with power, clarity, and authority. And tonight, Lord, somebody will cry out and yield to you, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Tonight, my friends, a brief review of the book of Revelation quickly reveals several critical points in it. Number one, a terrifying, deadly organized conflict is taking place on this earth between good and evil, between Christ and Satan, between truth and error. Jesus, the Son of God, my friends, powerfully leads the forces of good with love, courage, wisdom, kindness, patience, integrity, gentleness, sincere ser serenity, my brothers and sisters, sympathy, compassion, tact, and ge um, geniality. His leadership style is one of concern and fear play for even his worst enemy. He is worthy of our worship because he is our creator and he is our redeemer. My brothers and sisters, tonight I want to introduce to you someone else. On the other hand, my friends, is powerfully and powerfully lead the forces of evil in relentless devastating assaults upon Jesus and upon his people. 
that someone tonight, my friends, according to Revelation, is the devil and Satan. As a leader, my friends, he is unbelievably militant, grass, venomous, heartless, hateful, and unscrupulous. Yet, my friends, incredibly, as it may seem tonight, he also asks for our worship. Tonight, we will consider some shocking facts about the devil, which will doubtlessly astound you. But please remember, my friends, that he is our bitterest enemy. He is deadly. He's serious about destroying every one of us. And unless we are aware of his characteristics and strategies, the odds are that very soon, even great persons among us uh, that we see as, as, uh, as heavenly potential will be ensnared and ruined. We will be doomed into worshiping him or ginald, as we say in Jamaica, or conned into worshiping this beast. My brothers and sisters, we were created in the beginning with the desire to worship, the desire to worship our creator, the desire to worship one who really redeemed us from sin and has given us a, a, a better way of life. But this person tonight, this being is seeking our, our attention. This being is seeking our, our, our worship and wants us to sway from, from the worship of God and worship him. My brothers and sisters, the truth is that all of us worship something. With some, it may be our own opinions, our own assets, our children, our houses, our cars, or, 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 or even, my friends, our pets we put before God. We give homage to Satan when we permit anything other than Jesus to have first place in our hearts. The shocking, sobering fact tonight are that every person on this planet is this very moment either worshiping Jesus or giving homage to Satan, the arch deceiver. Many, play homage, many pay homage to Satan innocently, don't even know. My brothers and sisters, They would turn from him in disgust, were his evil strategies exposed. The central purpose of, 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 of this sermon tonight is to expose the arch enemy and to uplift Jesus, our Redeemer and Savior. My brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that there was an angel in heaven. His name was Lucifer. Oh Lord, Lucifer became Satan. But Lucifer stood in God's presence and many believed. Let the heavenly, he led the heavenly choir. You see, my friends, as we go further in our study tonight, you're going to find out uh, that Satan could have sung four parts, he alone. He could be a choir, he alone. Satan, my friends, tonight has many titles. Let us look at them. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10 uh, that we read a while ago, it says that he's the devil. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That he 
may be tried, and he shall have tribulation ten days. But thou be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. That's the first name for him. He was Lucifer in heaven. Now, since he became, since he was kicked out of him, he has become the devil. In Revelation chapter 12 and verses 9 and 6, he's called the dragon, he's called Satan, he's called the serpent, and he's called the accuser. Satan is specifically mentioned 55 times in the book of Revelation. In addition, he is referred to indirectly scores of times as he works through his agents to destroy God's work and God's people. Satan means adversary or enemy. Devil, my friends, means the slanderer. Satan is here to slander God's name. He's here to slander heaven and to make heaven look bad and to make God look bad. But I'm here to tell you that he will not win because our God is conquering unto conquer. My brothers and sisters, most people today will ask the question, where did the devil come from? I want to let you know tonight that the devil came straight from heaven. Hallelujah. He was made by God, but he lived in heaven and he was cast out of heaven. Read with me Revelation 12, 7 to 9. The Bible says there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the old world. He was cast out into the earth and the, his angels were cast out with him. Tonight, my friends, the devil is not in heaven anymore. He's here in this world. This is where he dwells. And my brothers and sisters, he seeks to slander God's name, to change everything that God set up. And we, my brothers and sisters, should not allow him to gain that access with us. We must know better. And we must try our utmost best, my friends, to live for Jesus. Yes, he came from heaven. And some of us will imagine, how can a being so perfectly made get so corrupt that he had to be cast out to this earth? Jesus comments, commented on this. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Yes. When he was kicked out, he fell so fast as the lightning flashes from the east and went to the west. And so he came fast to this earth. And somebody might ask tonight, preacher, why did uh, uh, Satan leave heaven? The Bible says, my friends, a while ago, that he was cast out of heaven because he caused war in heaven, or let us call it that he sinned in heaven. Turn your Bibles with me to 2 Peter 2 and verse 4. 2 Peter 2 and verse 4. The Bible teaches us that Satan is not a being to be messed with. 2 Peter Two and verse four, it says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Yes, my friends, you ask tonight, why did they leave? They left, they were cast out into the earth because they sin. And because they sin, my friend, they are reserved unto judgment, which will happen to them when Jesus comes and claim you and I to himself, take us to heaven and return and burn them in the pit of fire that will be made with brimstone 
my brothers and sisters, and fire from the mouth of God and consume everything about them. I tell you, my friends, Satan was cast out. And the Bible tells us that he drew a third of the stars. And when we look in scriptures, the stars means angels. He drew a third of the angels from heaven, one third, and took them with him. If he had stayed there, he would have been so convincing. He would have, con he would have convinced all the angelic hosts in heaven. So God had to get rid of him. Amen. It is all fit, my friends, together. When we know that the Bible comments on the subject, Job, my friends, in Job 8 verse 7 says, The morning stars or angels sang together at the time of creation. The Revelation 12, 3 and 4 shows us that one third of them fell to, uh, with Satan. Second Peter 2, 4 tells us a while ago and confirms that God did not spare the angels who sinned. He, he caused them to go with their master and serve their master. Jude 6 confirms that angels did fall. Yes, just think of it, my friends. If one third of heaven's angels were deceived by Satan, he has incredible power to deceive and convince those of us who allow ourselves to be deceived. He who deceives angels, my friends, can much more easily deceive the people of this earth. We must never forget that. Stray. We must not stray, but stay close to Jesus in our, is our only way of safety from this cruel being which is in Revelation. This villain uh, that is causing mayhem in Jamaica today. He's causing mayhem in, 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 in Germany. He's causing mayhem in England. He's causing mayhem in Australia. He's causing mayhem in, in, in the United States. My brothers and sisters, everywhere in this world, Satan is causing problems everywhere. And men try to find out what is happening, but they will not find out because they are controlled by this villain. And my brothers and sisters, the day that their eyes are open and they see the majesty and the blessing of Jesus Christ, they will see that there's not people who are so wicked, but the villain, Satan. My brothers and sisters, You may ask tonight, where did angels or Satan or Lucifer came from? The Bible says that they were created. Colossians 1 and verse 16. Colossians 1 and verse 16 speaks to that fact tonight. That they were, they were created just like you and I. But they lost their way. Verse 16 of Colossians 1 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were made by him and for him. Lucifer was made to be the covering cherub in God's kingdom. He was made to worship God, Yahweh. But he chose not to worship God and chose to go his own way and seek worship for himself. Think of it, brothers and sisters. Both Jesus and the angels who became the angel, who became Satan, lived in heaven before the creation of this world. Since Jesus created everything, he also created the angels who introduced sin into the universe. Doubtless, my friends, that is why God said he made good and he made evil because one of his perfect creation took unto himself evil 
and became evil. And so God had to take upon himself that he made evil, but he made everything perfectly. My brothers and sisters, doubtless, the two loved each other deeply at one time. Yes, I can, I can tell you that Lucifer admired Jesus. He admired God the Father. He admired God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, it must have torn at Jesus' heart. To see the rebellion and sin that began and developed in the heart of this great angel till it was necessary to hoist him from heaven. Sin is still the same today. It always brings separation from God. Heartache and pain and sorrows and woe are all things that are caused by sin. But praise be to God. Yes, it will endure for a night. But thanks be to God. Joy will come in the morning. My brothers and sisters. When you malice and bite one another. You're separating yourself from God because that was the, the, the characteristic of the enemy, Satan. When you quarrel, when you fight, when you do all manner of evil, when you curse, when you do all kinds of sin, you are separating yourselves from God. But tonight, Jesus is standing at your heart door. Is knocking and pounding at your heart door. He says, I stand at the door and I knock. If you will hear my voice, humble yourselves and open up to me. I will come into you. I will sup with you and I will be your God and you will be my son and my daughter. My brothers and sisters, Satan, my friends, what was Satan doing in heaven before he sinned? And what was his name before he sinned? Isaiah 14. Isaiah chapter 14. And verses tw verse 12 says. Isaiah 14 and verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? That's his name. Son of the morning. That's his nickname. How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? I tell you, there were two covering cherubs on the heart of the covenant of God. On the mercy seat of God, on the throne of God, there were two covering cherubs. One was Lucifer, the other was Gabriel. The first, the highest angel in heaven was Lucifer. Next in line was Gabriel. So we had God the Father. We had God the Son. We had God the Holy Spirit. We had Lucifer, then we had Gabriel, then we have the seraphims, then we have the normal angels. My brothers and sisters, everything was in order and in harmony, but then wickedness come in the heart of Lucifer. Ezekiel 28 and verse 14 tells us, Thou art the anointed cherub. You hear that? He, he, he was the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so. That was what Jesus said. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down. In the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect. Hallelujah. In thy ways. 
from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. My brothers and sisters, Lucifer, my friends, was a perfect being. Lucifer, my friends, was a beautiful being and he's still beautiful. That is why when you have the girls and the men who are good looking and attractive, they think and full of themselves and think that uh, that they are the best things still sliced bread. But I want to remind them that they are only a lump of clay. And when God takes away his bread out of them, they become worms and dung in the sight of God. They are nothing in the sight of God. The best thing to have is Jesus in your life tonight. So my friends, Lucifer was a cherubim. A covering chariot. My brothers and sisters, he turned Satan, and Satan is depicted under the figure of the Prince of Tyre and the King of Babylon, which means the imagery trans transcends a mere local application to those two rulers. What we see, my friends, reflected in these Eden powers are the characteristics of their real king, Satan. My brothers and sisters, according to Psalm 80 verse 1, God's throne is located between two cherubims or angels. One stand on each side in a position of highest honor and trust. Lucifer was one of these cherubims before he fell. When we look at Lucifer, my friends, he's full of wisdom and beauty before the fall. My brothers and sisters tonight, if we continue to read Ezekiel 28, starting from verse 16 and 17, because we have read verses 14 and 15. But let us try again from verse 12. It says, Son of man, take, he, take up a lamentation unto the king of Tyre. Amen. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. That's how Satan was, Lucifer was. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardus, topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou wast made, which means he, the, the, Satan was built like a pipe organ. He could play any tune. He could open his mouth and you hear an orchestra flowing out of, out of him. Thou art the anointed cherub, the Bible says, and, and cover, that covereth. And I have set thee so that thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in, in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the days that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. But the multitude of thy man, man, uh, merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was filled up with because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupt thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I, my brothers and sisters, will cast thee out to the ground. I will lay thee before kings and they may behold thee. My brothers and sisters, 
Jesus has exposed Satan, and tonight he is exposed. Satan is naked. Satan is exposed, and you can see Satan for what he is tonight. Yes, he was beautiful. Yes, he was perfect. But the Bible says he caused violence and sin to come into him. And it was because of his beauty. Don't worship yourself, my friend. Don't worship any man. Don't worship your children because you are only dust. Dust you come from. Dust you will return when God take away his inspiration out of you. Thou was perfect, the Bible says. Thou was full of wisdom. Thou was perfect in beauty. Every precious stone covers you. You were the perfect, the workmanship of God that you were made with pipes and was prepared in the in the day that thou was created my brothers and sisters the myth that Satan is a strange mixture of half beast half man has caused thinking people everywhere to deny this existence that there's a Satan that there's a devil that there's an enemy against God thus they become easy praise to this brilliant deception you see how easy he deceived Eve? He's still deceiving people easily today. My brothers and sisters, because of the brightness and wisdom of his beauty, he became proud. So you see, if you are here tonight and you are a proud person, you are of the devil. Tonight, my friends, if you are a beautiful person and you be you are selfish because you are better looking than Pastor Dowding, you are from the devil. Pride and self-exaltation cause him to decide that he would be like the most high God. Mm, look at that. He wants to be like the most high. Hmm? How could he want to be that? The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 and 14, 12 to 14. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. How oh, art thou fallen from him, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Thou art, uh, oh, art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of, con of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will like, be like the most high. Satan or Lucifer became the first high man. This, this Lucifer became the first Rasta man. And so even though the Rasta man today, or the man that calls himself a Rastafari, who talks about I and I and I and I and I and I, you are from the devil. You must let go the I and I and I and say all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him and in his presence I'm going to daily live. I will con uh, set myself in the hands of God and let God have his way in me. Turn your Bibles with me to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 13. Revelation 12 and verse 13. You see, my friends, there are two strategies that Satan uses to capture or deceive God's people. 
And these two characteristics of Satan's strategy is in Revelation. Let us look at Revelation 12, 13. The first one, and when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, Satan is here and his strategy is to persecute God's people, which means you and I. So if you are coming to the church and believe my friends that you, it is a bed of rose, come think again. Because Satan is at your ease to make you be persecuted. Cause you to be looked down on, caused you to be, to be, to be ridiculed, caused you to be tested. And if you are not rooted and grounded in Christ, you will fail. The second thing that he has come to do, or the second characteristic and strategy that Satan is using to deceive God's people is found in Revelation 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which doeth deceiveth the whole world, not some, you know, the entire world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So tonight, my brothers and sisters, the two things are revealed to you tonight. Satan is here to persecute you. So if you are not getting any persecution as a, Christ, as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, beg God for some because you are on Satan's side if you are not getting any. My brothers and sisters, he's here to deceive us. And if you are not being deceived, you understand me? When I say he comes to deceive you, yes, he will test you. But my brothers and sisters, you can stand on Jesus Christ and be firm on Jesus Christ. You don't have to fall, but he comes with his deceptions. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Lucifer wanted to rise above you and rule others. You hear me? He didn't want to be ruled. He wanted to rule. He did not want to be below anybody. He wanted to be above everybody. And it's the same way in the church when you fight for positions, when you fight for this and fight for that, you are of the same temperament as Lucifer. We are in the last days. We are in the revelation time and we must put off all those garments and put on the garment of Christ to be saved in his kingdom. Even God, he wanted to be above. He wanted Jesus to rule, God to rule, God, God to obey him. Jesus on the other hand, took on the humble form of a man and became a servant even to the point of death. Satan has not done that for anybody. All he has done is cause you to sin and to come to shame and to laugh at you and skin up his nose at you. My brothers and sisters, the lesson is clear tonight to serve and love and give is to be like Jesus. To insist that others serve us and to force and covet and grab is to be like Satan. All of us, I pray, say tonight, will be on one side or another. But I pray God that we be on Jesus' side. Tonight, Revelation 12 and verse 10 said, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. 
for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. My brothers and sisters, all Satan wants to do with you is to accuse you. He wants, when you, when you fail and he tempts you and you fail, he run before God and say, you see, me don't tell you, he's nothing. He's, he's, he's only faking. We must put on Jesus and stand for Jesus. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. Revelation 2, my friends, and verse 10 says that he put God's people in prison. Yes, that's what he wants us to do. Revelation chapter 12, 2 and verse 13 says that he comes to kill or to make martyrs of God's people. We see it in the Bible. They martyred Stephen. Yes. They stoned Stephen to death. They stoned a lot of the apostles. They stoned a lot of the disciples. They, 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 their death came by, by, by stoning. Some of them were crucified. Some of them were burnt. Some of them were beheaded. That's what Satan wants to do with us tonight. But I am happy that there's a king of kings, that there's a lord of lords, that there is one who loves his people, who loves his creation, that he left his throne room above, knowing his death destiny. It was a lonely gill called Golgotha where he laid down his life for his people. Tonight there is a chance to live for Jesus. Tonight. Amen. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, Revelation say he's very angry with the remnant of God's seed. Yes. Jesus is the all. And my brothers and sisters, that those who keep his commandment and worship on the day that he has asked for, Satan is attacking the seed which is worshiping him on this earth today. And your life will not be easy as long as you call yourself a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And that is why I say to you, if you are not being tested, beg God for some testing. I want to let you know that Satan is the, the, a liar and he's the father of it. If you look in John 8 and verse 44, you will see that Satan and his followers were cast out of heaven because of their cunningness and their, their devices of evil. There are two strategies tonight, my friends that Satan uses on God's people. God said Satan's strategies are exposed. Satan appears as an angel of light. He will never come to you as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a dragon blowing fire with fog and look with horns and all these things. He will never come to you that way because you're going to run from him. He makes the music of the world so nice that when you hear them, you dance at them. He makes the clothes of the world look so good that we are now inviting them to church and wearing them to church and exposing our bodies. And, and God says your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. We must clothe it and wrap it up and cause this body to uh, and the building of God's Holy Spirit to be yes, covered sir. properly in the name of yes. Jesus. Preach, preach. Come on, preach. That's right. So oh, long I've been seeing Seventh-day Adventist women mm -hmm. in their minis and their low V-cut uh, uh, tops with their small brassiere and all their boobs dropping out. I sorry for us men sometimes because we are so tempted. That's what Satan is using to draw us away. I under, my brothers and sisters, why do you believe pastors and, and, and elders and all of us fall at, 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 at the sight of, of, of the revealing woman? My brothers and sisters, I tell you on Sunday night, keep your eyes on Jesus. Hey, hey, the Satan. It says that he's an angel of light. He was a he was a he was a cherub. He was he, 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 he was a he, his name is called he is called the light bearer. 
So he comes to you as an angel of light. Remember when even God, when he had access to heaven after he was cast out and God called for the, 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 his sons, uh, the sons of men to come to a meeting in heaven. See them go to present himself to. And he was not uh, looking like he, he, he wasn't an angel of light. It was because God knew him. Jesus said to him, what are you doing here? I call for the sons of God. He said, I'm here because I represent hurt. That's where my control. And he starts to ask about Jacob, Job. God says, have you considered Job? He said, you can't steal the talk. If you just move the protection from around him, he curse you to your face. God said, all right, go on up. Because he knew that his servant would never fail him. Hallelujah. I wish tonight he could say the same thing about the members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. When he tested Job, and he tested Job, and he took away everything from Job. He took away his children. He took away his animals. He took away everything that he possessed and left him with only one dry up wife. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. When he, he was in sackcloth and ashes and he was agonizing, he couldn't lay down, he couldn't stand up, he couldn't sit down and, and he didn't fear pain, my brothers and sisters. And he still said, I will not curse God. His friends say, you must sin. That's why this is happening to you. And then my friends, our God called a meeting again and he went back there and Jesus recognized him and said, what are you doing here? He said, you know, consider me servant Job. He said, you know, see, you protect him and him can't curse you. I bet if you touch him, body, he, he curse you and, re, re, and rebuke you. Jesus said, go ahead, but don't touch his life. And he went, my brothers and sisters, and he touched Job with sores from his head to his toe, my brothers and sisters. And when his wife saw the worms coming out of his flesh and eating up his body, my brothers and sisters, she was, she was hurt to her heart because she knew her husband was a Christian. She knew her husband hung on to Jesus and nothing else. She said, "Why well, you not curse God and dead that me can bury you, me can stand to see the worms coming out of you. Job say you talk like one of the fool, foolish women of the world. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though worms eat up this body, yet with my own eyes I shall see God. My brothers and sisters, Satan is not going to come to you ugly. He's going to come to you as a bright and shining armor. My brothers and sisters, the next thing he will do, he will come and appear. His ministers or his agents will appear as ministers of righteousness. That is why Benny Hinn I don't forget to call his name. So many preachers around the world who are not observing God's law and following the principles of God are so, seeming so powerful, causing miracles to happen. Satan can rot miracle too, brethren. So we must be careful because Satan can cause us to believe that the preachers that are going around today and are famous on television and on YouTube and have these radio stations and fooling up people, that they are messengers of light. Satan seldom poses as an evil one, but rather, my friends, as a warning, loving friends or Christian workers, he thus deceives the unwary by millions in his guise my friends is at the most damaging evil is evilest and worse satan usually does not work openly rather he works through human agents whom he can willingly or unwillingly or even unbeknown to them use or manipulate my brothers, tonight, the devil is using the Pope. 
The devil is using church elders. The devil is using pastors. The devil is using church brothers and sisters to carry his mandate. And my brothers and sisters, they say they have plain truth, but I'm here to tell them that they are carrying out the mandate of the evil one in the last days. Find your way back home under the banner of Prince Emmanuel, the blood-stained banner. Find back yourself there and serve God. My brothers and sisters, Satan uses people to do miracles. But the Bible says that they are the spirit of devils who works miracles. Tonight, my friends, when they work the miracles, my friends, these miracles will look like they are real but matthew 24 verse 24 says if he were if it were possible they shall even deceive the very elect of god matthew 10 verses 21 to 23 tells us so effective that in the judgment day will think they are saved people are going to think that Listen to me, those persons who are worshiping the first day, they believe that they are correct and they believe that they are truly going to make it into heaven. But even when on that day, they are going to think that they are saved until Jesus tell them that you are lost. Depart from me. I know you not, ye workers of iniquity. My brothers and sisters, Satan knows his Bible. Satan knows his scripture. He even tried it on Jesus. You remember? At the temptation of Jesus in the mount. He said, cast yourself down for he will give his angels charge over thee. Lest thou dash thy foot against the stones. Yes, Satan knows the Bible. And he can quote the Bible. Amen. My brothers and sisters. When he quotes the Bible though, he misuses it and he misquotes it. He said to Eve, didn't God say, in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. She said, yes. You hear him say, thou shalt not surely die. Misquote or misuse. My brothers and sisters, Satan is against those, the people of God. And especially those who keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible said in Revelation 12 and verse 17. What it says, and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. How can we be certain tonight, brothers and sisters, that Satan will not deceive you? Isaiah 8, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 8. And verse 20, it says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it, it's because there is no light in them. So my brothers and sisters, if you attend church and the church speak against the laws of God, they are not right. Check them against the Bible. Tonight, my friends, if you're listening to me and the church that you're going does not follow the testimony or the written word of God, look out, watch out, or find yourself someplace where God's word is put before the people. You must submit, my friends. You must not submit to all new light. You must scrutinize the new light by this, with the scriptures. 
So when somebody comes to you and tell you that they have received new light, don't believe. Don't take them at their word. Run to the word of God. Run to the scriptures. Run to the law. Run to the testaments. John 17 and 7 verse 17 says, If a man willing to do God's will, if I am willing to do God's will, Jesus will, I will know of all doctrines, whether it be true, be whether it be of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Test the word, brethren. Test the word. Read your Bible. Pray every day, and you will run the devil away. Second Thessalonians 2, 10 to 12 tells us that we must receive the love of the truth, and the truth is found in the word of the living God. We're coming down to a close, my friends. Be careful what you believe. Life and death are involved. Satan's masterful misuse of scripture is destroying millions today. I can say the majority tonight. Check every belief carefully by using the word of God, the Bible. He even sought to cause Jesus to fall. My Bible tells me that tonight Satan is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour because he knows his time is short. Satan can recognize that his time is very short. Oh, tragic, my friends, tonight that so many of us listening to me tonight on earth cannot realize that this, our time is short. We believe that we have eternity to sin. But my brothers and sisters, there will be a final fate for all those who support Satan. There will be a final fate for Satan and his angels. My brothers and sisters, Revelation 20 and verse 10, 10 tells us that there will be a lake of fire made for Satan and his angels. Hallelujah. See, Jesus did not make hell for his people that he created. He made it for Satan. Who, 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 who took a perfect being and became evil in the sight of God. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are and, the, and shall be for and be torment day and night forever and ever. This forever and ever don't mean that fire going to burn right through eternity. It means that Satan and his angels and the false prophets uh, and the pastors that teach falsely and the people that fall and grab onto these falsehood and worship the false gods and the false worship, they will be cast into the lake of fire and they will burn until they are no more. They will be burned to ashes, Ezekiel 28 verse 18 says, they will turn into ashes. If Hebrews 2 verse 14 tells us that the e Satan will be destroyed by Jesus and Ezekiel 28 19 says that he, will ne he shall never uh, never shall thou be any more, whether in heaven or in earth, you will be consumed. Brothers and sisters, I'm happy tonight that Revelation tells us that we don't have to be destroyed with the enemy. For in Revelation 12 and verse 11 tells us, that uh, and they, haha, talking about you and I, when we give our hearts to Jesus, when we go through this pandemic, when we go through the testing, when we go through the persecution, when we go through the backbitings and the laughter and all these things that people are doing to us, which says that when we, when they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb 
and the, by the word of the testimony and they love not their lives unto death my brothers and sisters the bible says that they we will we will we, we, we they those of us who are washed in the blood of the lamb will be saved it says that those of us who, 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 who stand by the word of god and by the testimony shall be saved those of us who are willing to give up our lives now and let God have his way with us unto the end. We will gain back our lives, even if they kill us now. When Jesus comes, we will gain life. In light, my friends, of Jesus' matchless love for you right now, my friends, and for his blessed invitation that he gives us in Revelation 22 and verse 17. He says to us tonight, and he calls to us tonight, and the spirit and the bride say what? Come. And let him that hear it say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Tonight, I want to ask you tonight, do you want Jesus tonight? If you want to be filled by his spirit, come. If you want to be saved, come. If you have heard him, come. He says, that you must taste and see that the Lord is good. My brothers and sisters, tonight, do you want to ask God to take control of your life? Tonight, my friends, do you want to be a testimony to others of the love and power of Jesus tonight? And do you consider your relationship with Jesus in a matter of a life and death situation? Do you believe tonight that if you serve God and be faithful to God, you will be saved? Do you believe tonight that if you serve the enemy, Satan, who is the villain of the drama of revelation, do you think that you will be lost? I want to bear the testimony of Jesus everywhere I go. I want Jesus to control my life, my brothers and sisters. I want to be saved in the kingdom of God. If you, my brothers and sisters, want the Lord to bless you, if you want the Lord to save you tonight, if you want Jesus to rescue you from sin, raise your hand right where you are tonight. Yes, he sees those hands. Yes, I see those hands. Yes, Jesus is seeing those hands tonight. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Pray with me tonight. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh Lord and our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you tonight for exposing the enemy, for exposing Lucifer, the dragon, Satan, the arch deceiver, the enemy, the accuser of the brethren, Lord, we thank you for opening up, opening him up to us tonight. We pray that we will stop giving him command over our lives. We pray, O oh God, that we will stop worshiping him. We pray, O oh Father, that we will stop serve him. We pray, Lord, that we will stop following pastors and churches and ministers and follow the thus set the Lord. Because, Lord, you came to rescue that which was lost. You came to seek and to save that which was lost. Tonight you are knocking at somebody's heart's door. I pray tonight that you will rescue the perishing. 
care for the dying. You will snatch them from pity, from sin and the grave. You will weep o'er the erring one. You will lift up the fallen. You will tell, we will tell them of Jesus, the mighty one to save. Hallelujah. Tonight, Heavenly Father, I ask of you to save somebody tonight. I ask tonight to write somebody's name in the Lamb's book of life. And I pray that when you come, Lord, all of us here, all those who are in the listening of my voice will hear, well done, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, and you will bless us and save us, and we live and reign with you forevermore. Thank you for your saving grace. Thank you for your blessing. Give us a good night's rest. Allow us to do our chores and our duties tomorrow. And bring us back tomorrow night for another word when we look at the incredibly good news of Revelation. Thank you, Lord. Bless us and give us a good night rest, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. We have listened to another power-packed message from the servant of God. Let us do our part to tell others about him because we know that soon and very soon when the Lord shall come, we, we would like our loved ones to be there. Let us sign up for the Christian Jubilee, my friend. Thank you all for joining us. See you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Sleep good. Because soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King.